Shit. Well, at least my socks match. Yeah, well, I had to get up early. Oh, shit. What'd you do to your head? I don't know. Can we hit this place? Mind if we look around and see? Yeah, go ahead. Why don't you get that asshole for a partner? Yeah, you know. Hey, well, look has been. I didn't throw my partner through a plate glass window trying to protect some beaner in the act of committing a felony. Beaner? Well, that beaner was unarmed. Well, he had a rap sheet longer than my dick. Ever been arrested, huh? Go ahead, laugh. I'm not on suspension. I'm not the one living on food stamps. So listen, Joe, we got a problem. Jake Farley's dead. Great. He was a real scumbag. Somebody slit his throat with a wire. Got any leads? Everything's been slow for you since Dwight busted your ass. Well. How you fix your money, you okay? Great. Let's get a cigarette. You know, I, uh, I never agreed with what they did to you. I'd like to help you out, Kenny. Whoever Ice Farley did us all a favor. This your shirt, Paris? No, I take in laundry. Yeah, it's my shirt. The cuffs. I found it behind the refrigerator. There's something else. Having trouble with your garbage, Joey? We found your name in Farley's pocket. This is a setup. Joe Paris, you are under arrest for the murder Knock of Jacob it Farley. Off. You yeah, have come the right on, to take remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak yeah, to an attorney. Yeah, I know it. Come on, he knows it off by heart, for Christ's sake. You have the right to have an attorney present before any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you without charge by the court. Do you understand each and every one of these rights I've explained to you has yeah! been? Yeah! Easy, easy. Take it easy. It's over for you, Paris. You're finished. All right, all right, all right. Don't do anything stupid. Jesus. Public Defender's Jesus. Office, may I help? Some asshole jumps off the Tobin Bridge with Jake Farley riding the rope. The <laughs> <laughs> DA's been after that sleazebag Farley for years. Some guy should get a medal for saving oh, public funds. Too. The trouble is, the guy's a cop. So he just put the make on Joe Paris. 
Who most do you know? Oh, oh, yes. Joe's on suspension, so this case is going to draw a lot of heat. City Hall just called and laid it on us. Who's going to be the lucky guy? Well, here we go again, girls. Who's the lucky guy? By the way, guy is spelled A S S H O. Oh, that is so Rabbits, you and Samson have the most experience with this shit. Which one do you want? Wait a minute, Brannigan. What's your problem, Hudson? My problem is my last three cases have been a postman bitten by a poodle, some first time grass mokers, and a derelict knocking quarters out of a parking lot. Yeah, Brannigan, the lucky ladies in this office get every shit. Yeah, I've been here for two years, and I want this case. I am better than Kravitz or Samson. Oh, the defendant is entitled to better than one of your old poker pals defending him. You know, Paris really deserves one of these broads, Brannigan. It's a great way to get rid of the hot hit. Pretty tough on us to put our heart into keeping Paris out of jail. Oh, Come on, Brannigan. Brannigan. Putting one of these burnout hacks on the oh. case is a travesty of justice. Hey, Kravitz, do I look like a burnout case? Well, you do look a little gray around the case. All gray. right, all right, Hudson, but you better deliver. <laughs> Because my tail's gonna be in a crack for not putting one of the old pros on this. I am better than one of your old pros. Yeah, from your mouth to God's ear. Wow, got it. Fifteen minutes, Joe. Joe Paris, I'm Jennifer Hudson, your attorney. I'm extremely busy right now, and we only have a short time, so. Let's get started. Tell me, what happened last night? You do talk. Where's Meyer? Mr. Meyer took a corporate job. Don't worry, I'm smarter than Meyer. I got you. I didn't know I was so popular. Oh, you're a celebrity downtown. You don't find many liberal cops these days. Well, is that what you think I am? My partner shot an unarmed man. I just nudged him a little. You nudged him through a plate glass window, and six months ago, assaulting a police captain? You realize your history of violent assault does not make our case any easier, but I can help you. Who dresses you in the morning? Be nice, Mr. Paris. Remember, your ass is in my hands. Tell me about last night. There's something very strange about a wealthy chick like you. Defending a trickle-down case like mine, it sounds dangerously like a hobby. Public defender wearing a Rolex. Your insecurity is not my problem. The watch is a gift from my fiance. You don't wear a ring. Real detective. I got the watch instead. Yeah. Send me somebody that works for a living. Fuck you, you arrogant asshole! Nice. <laughs> it's my asshole, lady. It's my career. Oh, I'm sorry. How'd you get to be a public defender anyway? I got a late start. I blew five years in the Peace Corps. Perfect. I don't want the courtroom experience. Yeah, we'll get it with somebody else. You don't know anything about me, lady. Yes, I do. I know you're a cop accused of murder one, you have a violent temper, and you have a history of problems with authority. But I can get you off. The minute I don't shine for you, you can fire me, but I'll be damned if you're going to pass on me because of the way I dress. That's not me. This is me, guts and brains. You cannot do any better. Dear God, a vast version of Tarzan. Fine. I was getting you out of here tomorrow. Your bail bondsman friend, Delmar Frazier, agreed to put up bail. He says he owes you, but if you're not interested. How do you know Delmar? I do my homework. Now, should we talk about last night? Sure. I don't remember. Don't stonewall me, Paris. I'm not. I got drunk. That's happened before. I passed out. You don't remember anything? No, nothing. Who had reason to kill Farley? Lots of people. He had lots of things on lots of people. Did he have anything on you? No. Friends of mine. You knew him? Yeah. Well, he was a snitch, you know. I used him on busts. How well did you know him? I used to shake him down a little when he got out of line. What do you mean, shake him down? Well, slap him around. I never hurt him. But it would be correct to say you had several violent physical encounters with him over a period of years. I guess so. And on more than one occasion, you threatened his life in the presence of witnesses? Yes. Yes, I, 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 I have a bad temper. I'd say you do. Ms. Hudson, I 
I've done a lot of shitty things in my life. But I've never killed anybody. See you tomorrow. What? You arranged to have a psychiatrist interview your client? Yes, I have, Your Honor. That's the man who found Farley. He was on a bottle of Valium at the time, doesn't even remember stopping his car on the bridge. You can find another razor. No. This doesn't surprise me. What have you done now? Delmar, I think you've met Miss Hudson. Only over the phone. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. So I hear you two go a long way back. This dude saved my life. There was nothing. Listen, Joe, you skip bail on me, I lose my house. And I just put a hot tub on my deck, you understand? I fail to see the wisdom of granting bail in a first-degree murder case. Community safety is the priority here. Your Honor, Joseph Paris has lived in this city all his life and intends to remain here. Mr. Paris has no prior arrest, Your Honor. He has protected this community for 14 years as a police detective. We also feel, Your Honor, that our case is strong. It is in my client's interest to exonerate himself by showing up for trial. I feel there is no risk that he would not appear. What does the district attorney's office think about that, Mr. Nix? I concur with Ms. Hudson that Mr. Parrish is well known to the law enforcement community in Boston. However, that the seriousness of the offense calls for a sizable cash bond. I'd like to add that my client was locked up last night with men he has sent to jail. There is an institution in the state where Mr. Paris would be free from reprisals. I can do without the dramatics, Counselor. You've made your point. Mr. Paris, bail is set at $500,000 with surety or $50,000 cash. Um, Your Honor, we are prepared to post real estate with equity of $50,000 if that is acceptable. Mr. Nix. No objection, Your Honor. Very well. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, uh, I hope you realize that I took it easy on you in there. I didn't have to let your guy walk. You did the right thing. No, I did the expedient thing. I don't want to sensationalize this case any more than you do. Why don't you do us all a favor? Let's plead this guy. I'll give you a good deal. I've got the guy nailed. We'll find out in court, won't we? You are new at this, aren't you? Oh, did I tell you they've got Paris's blood type on a murder weapon? Yeah, it just came back from the lab. Hudson, right? I'm offering you a deal. Now, don't drag your client through this. Or yourself. See you in court, Mr. Nix. Is this supposed to jog my memory? That's the idea. Do you want to stop? No. Do you want to see where the body was found? I usually don't like people from a lot of money, but... Of course, there are exceptions. Put that away. What? Put that away. Don't like that. You can't be serious. Not in my car, OK? OK. Look familiar? Farley's bar? Of course it looks familiar. You've been inside? No, me? Never. When was the last time? I don't know. A month ago. Two months ago. Give me a break. It's a pretty nice place. Oh, yeah, real nice. Up to their ears and hookers, and they got enough cocaine here to start a revolution. Are you Joe Paris? Mm hmm I have a message for you from Mr. Farley. Mr. Farley? The son. Mr. Farley says, fuck off. He doesn't want you in here anymore. Is that what he said? Joe, it's not worth it, Joe. Let's go. Joe. Yeah, so what? Do you believe this putz? His father only died two days ago. Not exactly in mourning, is he? Maybe Matt's a suspect. He hasn't got the balls to kill his old man.
get you enough to frame you then, Joe. I want a hundred names. I'll prepare you a list in the morning. Hey, you see that? What? It's a cop, I think. Let's go. A word. Hello. I'm up here. Hmm. You are in bed early. Well, I'm beat, honey. Really? Yeah, really. I don't want you working too hard, okay, babe? Mm. So how'd it go today? I had a rough day. Yeah? Why? DA wants to make a deal. Nobody ever made AG by plea bargaining. I don't want to be attorney general. You will. No, I won't. Yes, you will. I think Paris is guilty, Kyle. So? That's why he's got you. This case is good for you, Jenzer. Really. Want to join me? I can't. Guess who sold 20 million in double B bonds today? What? <laughs> I'm getting the boat. You know the 41-footer? When are you ever going to have time for sailing lessons? I'll make time. On your schedule? I'm a can-do guy. <laughs> You're a jerk. Why didn't you call me before? I tried, but you were out. I ordered you a cellular phone. I don't want a cellular phone. Jim, we don't communicate enough. We need a cellular phone, OK? This one's black. It's sleek. Press one button, you're talking to me. You'll love it. Can we talk about this later, honey? Okay. You said on the phone you saw Joe Paris the night of September 23rd? Yeah, that's right. We had a party. <laughs> Joe was here all night. You're sure he was here all night? You're damn right. Me and my dog drove him home when we closed up on account of the bump on his head. And what time was that? 4 a.m. Yeah, that's right. See, because I always take away their keys, the big drinkers anyway, of which Joe was definitely one of. But I'll tell you one thing. Ain't no way Joe would have made it home that night. Passed out cold. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> How did he get them? The bump on his head. Yes, some asshole got loud, started pushing this woman around. So Joe put this guy down. <laughs> Joe's a fighter. Who was the man he hit? Never saw him before. You don't know his name? No. Or the woman? They came in together. They weren't regulars. Joe's pretty hot-tempered, huh? Yeah, but Joe ain't no killer, though. I mean, this folly was a walking execution waiting to happen. Folly had this reverse Midas touch. Everybody's life he touched turned to shit. This was four nights ago. Why didn't you call me sooner? Hey, I read it in the paper yesterday. I called you. Will you testify that Joe was here that night? Yeah. Thanks, Lou. How'd I do? You did just fine. I'll let you know when the trial date is set. Sure thing. Thanks. Okay. Your bartender's lying. He sounds coached. 
You're just trying to intimidate me because your case is falling apart. No, my case is airtight. I have got motive. I've got method. I've got the murder weapon with matching blood. That's because Joe was framed. We've got the alibi. Paris put this guy up to it. A lot of people owe him favors. Your alibi is a fabrication. Prove it. I will. In the meantime, you won't mind calling up the tail you put on Joe and me? It's illegal. What tail? A few nights ago, a cop was hanging around Farley's. When I spotted him, he took off. Then yesterday, a cruiser followed me to lose, and then back here. Did you get the number on the car? No, and I didn't get the man's ID either. He was following me, not interviewing me. I didn't authorize that. We don't do that. Then you won't mind undoing it. The bartender is lying. If you don't want to come, we got a private box at the garden. All right, I'll bring home Chinese after the game. Have fun. Are you Jenny Hudson? That's right. My name's Deborah Quinn. I need to talk to you. It's about Joe. My husband doesn't know I'm here. He doesn't know I know Joe. Do you know who Vincent Quinn is? The DA talks about him. No one ever makes anything stick to Vincent. So it seems. be interesting. What are you so afraid of? Joe was with me the night Farley was killed. Where? At my house. Vincent was out of town. It is not what you think. I got involved with Joe shortly after his wife died. That was two years ago. That's right. Vincent and I were going through some rough times. This kind of rough. The night after he did this, I went to Farley to have Vincent killed. 10,000 up front, another 10 afterwards. But I couldn't do it. I called it off. Farley wouldn't give me my money back. He played me a tape of my meeting with him. And he said that if I didn't pay him, he would play it for Vincent. So Joe fixed things with Farley. I don't know how, but he got my money back. How far would you go to repay an old debt? What do you mean? Would you commit perjury? I didn't have to come here. If my husband knew that I was here, he... I'm telling you the truth. Joe was with me the night that Farley was killed. The rebound is Bork and a big break here. Up by the headbands it to Neely. Neely drops it for Bork. Jeez. Bork lets it go and burn a beautiful stop. Can I call you if your phone is off the hook? Oh, yeah? Good one here. you were giving that up. Hey! It's in your car, lady. This is my apartment. What the hell's the matter with you, anyway? I met Deborah Quinn tonight. She says she was with you the night Farley was killed. 
Yeah, well, she's making it up. Is your bartender friend making it up, too? Nick thinks so. The whole world is turning out to commit perjury for Joe Paris. Joe, this is a murder trial. You have people lying for you. They will destroy you. You coached him. You spent the night with Deborah, but you couldn't use her as an alibi, and Lou owed you a favor, just like Delmar did, right? What are you getting so worked up for? Tell me the truth, Joe! It was easier to talk to Lou! You know who Deborah's married to? Have you got any idea? If she takes the stand, he'll have us both killed. There was no blackout. You spent the night with Deborah. There was a blackout! But you spent the night with Deborah! I don't remember! I'm not bringing her in on this. She is your alibi, Joe, if she's telling the truth. I won't need an alibi if we find out who did it. Right now, you are the prime suspect. <sighs> Joe, I need to know everything about your relationship with Deborah. Why? That woman had the oldest motive in the world for killing Farley. If you're involved with her, that gives you the same motive. I need to know what went on, or the prosecution will take us apart. Are you still lovers? No. Then she's lying, too. She said she was just with you. What's going on? How could that conceivably be good news for the bond market? It's very perverse. And the Japanese will come in and buy our bonds. It's it's weird, does it worry you as one who has watched rapes historically? Every, everything worries me, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a buyer, or a seller, or just a fretter now? Uh, I'm, I'm neutral on rapes, and I just follow mm, I hope you save me some. The, the trend lately has been mostly up and down, so I cut back in the stock market. Turn that down a bit, honey. Would you be surprised if the market was up 100 points next week? No, I would not be. I think we're. I was watching that. What's the matter with you? I told you I was going to bring home Chinese food after the game. Looks like you ate it all, too. Where the hell were you? I went to see Joe Paris. We're having problems. Well, I thought we were going to spend some quality time tonight. OK, let's go. It's too late. I got to get up early. You were being infantile. You went to the house of a murderer. I went to the house of a client. You said yourself he's guilty. I never said that. I just thought that we were going to spend the evening together. You went to the bar. Game, Kyle. That was scheduled, and you know it. I was back here at 10.30. I didn't know where the hell you were. And now I find out you're with a murderer in his house? I suppose he tried to put the make on you, huh? Knock it off. He did, didn't he? He did. Get out of my face, and thanks for the one goddamn egg roll. Hey, there's another spare in here. You want it, huh? Take it. Cute. Oh, you missed. You're a jerk! Oh, God. Nobody to cover it, and, 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 and nobody to go over there. So okay. just get the guy on the phone and tell it to him straight. All right. I see your bartender's off the witness list. I was right, wasn't I? Postpone. I'd say you both had enough enemies. It was just a matter of time for something like this happened. Just be glad Farley ain't the one that's being framed. Here's my desk. You're all hard. You know, you never should have left this precinct. Those guys downtown play a different ball game. So don't move around. If anybody sees you here, you tell them you're working for me. Hi. Tough break. You you Joe Paris, right? You'd feel kind of silly if I wasn't, wouldn't you? Listen, I hate to see a fellow officer in trouble. They get a cop by the balls, they squeeze. You need all the friends you can get. You got something to say, say it. All I'm saying is that cops got to stick together because nobody else gives a damn.
Nick Anthony deceased. Go on. James Columbus deceased. Dear God, this is making me feel very old. Helen all my enemies Lan, are dead. Since 83. Not all of them. Paul Lance Lewisburg. Harry Norton, parole 87. Matt Darby blind. Wait a minute. Harry Norton? How did he make parole? Good behavior. Good behavior? I sent him up 11 years ago on conspiracy to commit murder. What's the link to Farland? There is none. Where is he now? Norton Fish, please hold. What do you need? Harry Norton. He's getting his tubes cleaned in Brazil. Norton Fish, hold, please. Honeymoon. He married ten. How is Tanya? Well, she married the boss. What more could a girl want, right? Mm. Norton Fish, oh, please. I love it when I get a whole line of blinking lights. So he married old Tanya, huh? Oh, I don't mean the mother. I mean the daughter, Tanya Jr. Oh, the old lady was pissed. But what could she say? I mean, she was after his bucks, too. Now she gets him without all the hassle. How long have you been away? Can you believe three weeks? Norton Fish, please. Fish, Bo, I've been on hold for 15 minutes now, you know? I told you, please hold. You hang up, you go to the end of the oh, line. Yeah, yeah. I bet he wanted you. Good to have you. Well, I really wasn't interested. I mean, I could never fall for a guy whose hands always smell like fish. Maybe she worked cheap. Are you kidding? She got a raise every time he closed the door. You wouldn't happen to have an itinerary around here, would you? I mean, I'd like to send him a wedding gift. They'd love that, but nobody's supposed to know where they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rio. I did the paperwork myself. Four weeks in Rio, left second week in September. I'd like to take you to Rio myself. Oh, yeah? Mm. I'm free. I'm not. I'm wanted for murder. Don't you just hate when that happens? Hello, Joe. Hello, Eddie. I told you I didn't want to see you again. You mind getting off my car? What for? I like it here. I'm afraid you might fart and the garlic would peel the paint. That's funny, Paris. Nothing could hurt this shit. Don't screw around my car, pal. Yeah? You're up in murder one, Paris. You gotta watch that temper of yours, asshole. <laughs> He was this. screwing around with my car. Your car? Your car is a dump. I like my car. <sighs> Hang on a minute. I thought I told you to wear a red tie. I don't have a red tie. I'll get you one. Is that going to bleed much more? How the hell do I know? Terrific. And on the matter of police brutality, do you find anything troubling in the policeman using his office unfairly, say, to commit a crime. How about you, sir? Well, the police can go too far, sure. And you, ma'am, how do you feel about police brutality? I think the police have a hard job, and they're in danger a lot. And you, sir? I think she's the off should stay list. within the guidelines of the law, the same as any other citizen. And you? I think the police are killers. Killers, right? Mr. Bastianelli, can you really tell me with all conviction that you believe someone is innocent until the prosecution proves them guilty? Or do you sometimes feel you can tell just by looking at someone whether he is guilty or not? 
Sure, a guy might look guilty, but uh, I'd keep an open mind. Mr. Bastianelli, have you ever had any experience with a police detective? Been followed by one or questioned by one? If I have, he must have been a good one, because uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? He's in the house. You went to see my lawyer, didn't you? I had to. I want you out of this. But I am in this, Joe. Your lawyer said that I don't have to say everything. We could have been just friends. You gotta realize something. You get on that stand, that DA's gonna rip you apart. And then Vince is gonna find somebody and rip us apart. Tell me what happened that night. You got here about 10. We drank until 3 or 4 in the morning, and then you went home. Well, how did I get this cut on my head? You fell. Where? Here. Where? Yeah. What happened that night? What do you remember about that night? Nothing. But you remember coming here? No. You had been drinking before you got here. And when you arrived, there was blood on your shirt and a cut on your forehead. You said you'd been in a fight. What are we going to do? I don't know. I just know I want you out of this, okay? Okay? Okay. Very beautiful. Yes, she was. Would any woman marry a man like Farley? Money and power. Of course, you wouldn't know about things like that. I suppose you prefer animal magnetism. Yes, Jenny, I do. Uh, can I offer you and your friend a complimentary after lunch drink? Yes. No. Uh, yes. No. Well, whatever she says. <sighs> Thanks anyway, Louise. I've decided to put Deborah on the stand. We had this discussion. We have no choice. I don't want her on the stand. She's your only alibi, Joe. I don't give a Joe. damn. You're, you're concentrating on the wrong person. What about Norton? You can smoke if you want to. I don't want to smoke. Norton and Farley had nothing to do with each other. Norton was out of the country at the time. So what? All he had to do was make a phone call. We still need a link to proceed on Norton. There is no link. What about police officers? Did you have enemies on the force? Lots of them. All right. Anybody like you? Just you. I feel like I'm working blindfolded here. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe you don't trust me. Where are you going? See, you don't trust me. Was real. Just great. Be right with you, honey. You're Joe Paris, aren't you? Yeah. Get lost. <laughs> I was a honeymoon. Wonderful. Well, what do you want, Paris? Talk to Jake Farley lately. Farley? I haven't seen that bum for years. Somebody put a piano wire around his neck. Yeah, so what? Scum was always a loser. So I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, well, talk to my lawyer. Well, you yeah, got a good one now. Listen, Paris. I'm out of jail now. I got a new business. I got a beautiful new wife. Harry, let's go. I got a good life now. Harry, come on, oh. honey. We'll be late for the decorator. Nice to see you again, Paris. Could anyone else have murdered Jacob Farley? Answer's no. There are no other suspects. This murder was committed by one man, the defendant, Joseph Paris. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, during the course of this trial, the state will prove beyond reasonable doubt that Joe Paris brutally murdered his longtime enemy, Jacob Farley, the loving father and sole support of two young people, Matthew and Amy Farley, then cruelly displayed his contemptuous deed by dumping the body 
on the Tobin Bridge for all to see. We will show that the defendant had the means and the motive and the opportunity to kill Mr. Farley. We will show that Mr. Paris is a dangerously violent man who cannot control his temper and who has been suspended from the police force for unwarranted violence. We will show that he had a long history of violent association with the deceased and threatened his life many times. We will show that the murder weapon was in Mr. Paris's possession at the time of his arrest and that it was covered with the blood type of Mr. Farley and also that of the defendant. And when all the testimony is in and the evidence is before you, it will show beyond a reasonable doubt that Joe Paris is guilty of the cold-blooded murder of Jacob Farley. Thank you. Does the defense wish to make an opening statement? We do, Your Honor, but we reserve opening until the government has concluded its case. State calls Matthew Farley. Matthew Farley. Matt, will you please tell the court your experience the night of September the 23rd? 23rd was a Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we went to this little fish place for dinner. My sister Amy and I both went. And on the night of the 23rd? My father called from the club, said he couldn't make it. Did he tell you why? He said he was going to meet Joe Paris. He said Paris had been bugging him again, that it was time he dealt with the bastard once and for all. Objection, hearsay, move to strike. Sustained. The witness's last comment will be stricken from the record. Did you recognize the name of Joe Paris? Yeah. Six months ago, Paris came into the club and got into a shouting fight with my father. This Joe Paris that fought that night with your father in the club, can you identify him here in the courtroom? Him. Let the record show the witness pointed to the defendant. We had a good band that night, but everybody was listening to the yelling at the entrance. Do you recall what was yelled? Yeah. He kept saying that my father wouldn't be around much longer. How did you feel when you then heard that your father was going to meet Joe Paris on September the 23rd? I was afraid for him. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Farley. Do you know for a fact that your father actually met Mr. Paris on the night of the 23rd? That's where he said he was going? You do not know that he actually met Mr. Paris? No. Mr. Farley, what business was your father in? He had a club. This is the same club that you yourself have now taken over? Yeah. You did not close it down at all for the funeral? Objection. Sustained. Counselor. Since you have taken it over so easily, you must know a lot about your father's business. Did he ever do business with anyone else named Joe Paris? No. Do you know a Joe Paris with an H? Yeah. Were you aware that Mr. Parrish owed your father a lot of money? Objection. Not covered by direct. Overruled. You may answer the question. Yeah, well, Parrish didn't come down to the club, but that prick did. Mr. Farley, this is a court of law. Choose your language accordingly. Shall I repeat the question, Mr. Farley? Look, lady, this is all lawyer bullshit. Answer the question in good order, Mr. Farley. I have Farley. a tape of Joe Parrish, that Joe Parrish, saying he's going to kill my father. Objection. That's hearsay. Mr. Farley. You will limit your answers to the questions He didn't asked. come home that night. I went down to the club. There were some tapes. One had Paris's name on it. Potter! Potter! The witness's answer will be stricken from the record. And the jury is instructed to disregard his statements. Counsel may sidebar. Honor, the district attorney said nothing about a tape during discovery. We had no knowledge of any tape. I now want a warrant for possible admission into evidence. Your Honor, I ask the tape not be admitted into evidence since it was not discovered prior to trial. Denied. Where is the tape now, Mr. Farley? At the club. Your Honor, unless the state proves that this tape is authentic, I must ask for a mistrial. It is technically possible to re-edit a recording so that the intent of the person is completely taken out of context or even contradicted. That's true, Counselor. We'll recess to allow prosecution to secure the tape and test its authenticity. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons who have anything further to do before... So, tell me about the tapes. Probably used to tape everything. How? Same way Nixon did. I think Jake got that club. So the tapes are real? 
She made a mistake, Farley, but you screw around with her and I'll take those goddamn tapes and I'll stick them up your ass. You got that? Can we discuss this rationally, Joe? No. How's this for rational? Give the lady back her money. Give me the tapes and get off her back. Otherwise, you know what I'll do. What is Matt Farley doing something like that anyway? Trying to find his father's murder? We don't even know when it was recorded. 3784. That's pretty stale. I mean, it's more prejudicial than probative. It demonstrates defendant's motive. Miss Hudson, I'm inclined to admit this tape. However, I will give you the opportunity to have it examined for authenticity by your own expert prior to my final ruling. Now, if you two will excuse me. That was pretty dirty. I told you, I didn't know anything about it. This is a big time, little girl. You wanted high stakes, you got them. Counsel. Hudson, James Nix here. I'm afraid your client's been hiding things from you. You want to meet me at the Bay Tower room? I was just on my way home, James. This is documentary evidence that blows your case wide open. Now, you can learn about it in court tomorrow. That's fine with me. I'll be there. Sit down. No, thank you. Have you seen your client's war record? He's a killer. Special Forces Phoenix program killed a lot of people in Vietnam. He strangled them the same way he allegedly strangled Farley. He was trained for it. You'll never get this into evidence. It's 18 years old. Are you ready to talk a plea bargain now? Say, second degree? Maybe it wasn't premeditated. I mean, strangling evidently is second nature to this man. It's circumstantial, and it doesn't prove a thing. But you know what your problem is? You're too hungry. You want to make a name for yourself. And you think Joe Paris is your ticket. I have to listen there to this. There comes a point when you've got to think about your client first. You can't win this. Murder two is the best you're going to do. You'll be out in three years unless he kills somebody else in the meantime. You better take him this offer. Good night, James. I'm going to nail your man, Hudson. Yeah, I'm Paris. Yeah. Guess what? I just saw your war record. What do you mean? Jesus Christ, Joe. I, I don't understand. I was in the war. But what's the problem? You are lying, that's what! You wanted to see me? Yeah. What are you doing? Nix told me offered a deal on the Paris case and you turned him down. Is that true? I know what I'm doing. Hudson, the man is as guilty as hell now. Who the fuck do you think you are, F. Lee Bailey? You've got a man's life in your hands. Are you willing to take responsibility for a guilty verdict? Are you that sure of how well you'll do in a trial? You better be damn sure, Hudson. You know, one of the reasons I use old pros on cases like these is that they don't play God. Now, you take my advice, plead the case, and get it over with.
I think I did this? The door was open. Just get out of here. I think maybe I owe you an explanation. Not now. I didn't tell you about the war record because I didn't think it mattered. Just like Lou's perjury didn't matter, and Dipper Quinn didn't matter, and the tapes didn't matter. I need to believe in you, Joe. And I don't. You are lying to me. I lied to keep somebody alive. No more. All right, come on. I'll tell you whatever you need to know. No, I'll tell you what you need to know. Get out of my house now! Is this it? Yes! I think she asked you to leave, dude. This must be his gucci -ness. You know, I got a mind to bust you in the mouth. Kyle, you don't want to do that. Did you bring this trash into my house? That's enough, both God, of you. Now what? Police hey, officer. Hey, what? Get out of here! Do you have a search warrant? Got any new tapes, Joe? What tapes? I'd like to file a complaint. I'm his lawyer. Are you his lawyer, too? No, I'm his lawyer. Well, who is he? I live here. Do you know this man? I'd like to file a complaint. Will you shut up, What's Kyle? a complaint? The mink on his jock strap is molding. You want to look into that? Oh. He's clean. Thanks. Now, what is your problem? Who did it for you, Joe? Did, did what? what? I want this conversation to take place somewhere else. Well, this Kyle, please. Says and draw yourself a bath, huh? That's enough, so, Paris. You know, you're going to get clocked. Shut oh, up and man. listen. Somebody took a big interest in the tape collection at Farley's house. Helped himself Why to quite a few. Kid? No, it was not the dick face kid. He wasn't home. The alarm went off, so whoever it was didn't find out what he wanted. Obviously, he came here, too. Now, do you have any new information I should know about? You do not have to answer that. Oh, I don't believe this. I think we're telling anybody, Nix. Yeah, why don't you search my house or search my car? We have. Oh. We were having a very nice conversation here, my attorney and I, before you came in. If you in. don't mind, we'd like to continue. It's your funeral. Have a nice evening. By the way, he's offered you a deal. Oh, yeah? What kind of deal? Plea bargain down to murder two, parole in three years. Mind if I smoke? No. Yes? Don't you dare light that cigarette. He's lighting the cigarette. Kyle, can we talk about this some other time? What did the defendant, Joe Paris, say then? If he said that Farley had gone too far this time, somebody's got to take him out. If I take him out, do you understand what I mean? Uh, kill him. So you heard Joe Paris on September the 21st predict that somebody was going to kill Jake Farley that was two days before Mr. Farley was murdered? Yeah. I wonder how he knew that. Objection. Sustained, Mr. Nix. I know for the questions. Mr. Ruger, didn't you state your profession as cab driver? Yeah, well, it's, it's mainly cab driving. But on occasion, you have gone on errands for the deceased Mr. Farley. Yeah, I go on errands for lots of people, including Joe when he was with the Boston PD. It's what I do. Oh, come on, Mr. Ruger. I mean, you have been paid considerably more than cab fare for making certain deliveries to Mr. Farley's associates. Your Honor, Mr. Ruger's not on trial here. No one says he is. You may answer the question. Uh, yeah, I made deliveries to uh, Farley's associates. Have you ever heard any of these associates speak ill of Mr. Farley? Speak ill of him? Yeah, well, they all, uh, spoke ill of them. Have you ever heard any of them express the opinion that the world would be a better place with Mr. Farley removed from it? I guess, yeah. In fact, Mr. Ruger, have you ever heard Mr. Farley's son, Matthew Farley, express dissatisfaction with the way his father ran his business? Farley was not very well liked, you know. Oh? Why? He didn't run his life like it was a popularity contest, did he? How did he run his life, Mr. Ruger? 
Did he ever double cross a friend? I guess, yeah. Did he ever cheat an associate? Yes. Did he ever inform on fellow criminals? Objection. Did he ever inform on fellow business associates? We need to hear your answer, Mr. Ruger. Yeah, well, he ratted, he stole anything to make a buck. I I'm not telling you anything new. Did he sell cocaine at his club? Yeah. Prostitutes at his club? Yeah. And did Jake Farley also blackmail people? Your Honor, I object. Let me rephrase the question. Mr. Ruger, did Jake Farley ever blackmail you? You didn't tell me this was going to happen. Your Honor. Order. The witness will answer the question. Yeah, he had stuff on me. You mean he blackmailed you? Yeah. Mr. Ruger, have you ever said anything unkind, hateful, or derogatory about Jake Farley? Yes. Everybody I know did. Now, Mr. Ruger, considering everything you and other people have said about Jake Farley, were the comments of Joe Paris anywhere near as strong as the others? Not really, no. Thank you. No further questions. Witness may step down. Your Honor, may we sidebar? Yes, Counselor. Last night, the state gained new evidence which shed significant light on this case. Your Honor, it's inadmissible. If you'll notice, paragraph three here, the, the underlined part. I can read, Mr. Nix. Yes, Your Honor. This thing is nearly 20 years old. Yes, Your Honor. But it shows a man's a war hero. You want to enter that into your case? It shows a pattern, a specific method of killing. Were you ever in the service, Mr. Nix? No, Your Honor. Take this away, if you don't mind. Hot shit. <laughs> Drop something. Mr. Farley, you had better get out of here before you, know, you, you think get you're in so, serious trouble. You think you're so high and mighty. You think you can do anything you want. You're trying to ruin my reputation and ruin my club. Club? Business is dying because of your little act. I got nobody in there because of you and your Joe Paris. Mr. Farley, this is not the way to handle things. Look, I know how to handle things. I've handled everything so far. Just you remember, lady. I know how to handle things. Oh my God! What's going on? What is this? No, no, what do you want? Huh? No, don't. No, please. You got some business here? Yeah. Huh? You got some business here? Your woman's a vulture, man. She lives off dead meat. Get out of here. She's garbage. Get out of here! No! Oh. Oh. See that? He tried to kill me. Come on, please. Come in the hell. Come on. Who the hell was that? Jake Farley's son. Please. I'm gonna sue the bastard. Come in. Just come. Calm down. Is this worth it? What? This! Dealing with the scum that you do every day. You don't need this. And I don't need it either. I know you don't. I'm really, really sorry. My Rolex. Witnesses for the... Oh. 
Witnesses for the defense will show that many individuals had both motive and opportunity to kill Jake Farley. The testimony will show that an array of criminals had made vows of revenge against Joe Paris for his key role in putting them behind bars. Many of these are convicted murderers with a grudge against Jake Farley as well. But we do not have to prove Joe was framed. He remains innocent until the prosecution proves him guilty. Please, always remember that, ladies and gentlemen, while we present an alibi witness who will testify that Joe Paris was nowhere near the scene of Jake Farley's murder. And this witness has a lot to lose by coming forth. The defense calls Deborah Quinn. Deborah Quinn? I thought we weren't going to involve her. We have no choice, Joe. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. We can't hear you, ma'am. Yes, I do. Could you please state your name and address? Deborah Quinn, 831 Hillside Park. Ms. Quinn, how long have you known the defendant? Almost two years. Could you please describe your relationship with him? We're friends. Good friends. On the night of September 23rd, could you please describe what you did starting about 5 p.m.? On the night of September 23rd? Yes. Well, uh, on the night of September 23rd, I was... <gasps> Go on. Miss Quinn. I was with my husband, Vincent. Your Honor, I move for a mistrial. Denied? Your Honor, the district attorney must know what's going on by bringing in this woman's husband. Order. Your motion has been denied, Counselor. I move for a brief recess. Any objection, Mr. Nix? Then, considering the hour, and with the holiday coming up, this court will adjourn for three days, next to resume this coming Tuesday. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. She's a dead woman. We have until next Tuesday to solve a big problem because right now we have no case. She's a dead woman and you just killed her. And what's more, you don't give a damn. You're my client, Dick Tracy. Not anymore. Fine. At present, depart. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'm in there. No. Miss Hudson. Vincent Quinn. Deborah's husband. I wonder if I might speak to Deborah for a moment. Oh, of course you can. But I think uh, you might be interested to know that my wife has told me everything about her friendship with your client. It was a long time ago, before she met me. And of course she'd want to testify on his behalf at the trial. However, I cannot allow her to perjure herself. I wouldn't want her to either. Miss Hudson, please. My wife told me about your idea to get your client off with a phony alibi. My idea? She couldn't possibly have been with your client that night because she was with me. I thought you were out of town. That's right. We were. At the Chicago Hyatt. Both of you? Both of us. And I assure you proper documentation could be provided if necessary. Now, if there is uh, anything else we can do, please, don't hesitate to call. Sweetheart? wrong now what do you mean this case is starting to consume you i don't like what you're becoming and what am i becoming that is so intolerable manish manish yeah just because i'm doing things my way now or is it because I'm involved with something that's more important than your almighty stock swindles? That's uncalled for. What are you talking about? Oh, come off it, Kyle! You look down on street people like Joe as though what you are doing isn't corruption. 
What do you call junk bonds, sweetheart? Junk bonds? What? You hide behind carefully worded SEC boilerplate, oh? and you sell shit to the public any idiot can see will never be paid back. Shit. But your hands are clean, because a battalion of corporate lawyers keeps you immoral pricks out of jail. Really? You feel better? After all I've done for you? I suppose you found me in the gutter, Kyle, and I should be so grateful for everything you've done for me. No, no, I just don't think you should be ungrateful. You know, there are lots of women who'd love to be in your shoes. You get one. Oh. Wait a minute, Jenzer. That name belongs in a polo pony! You know something? You're the snob, not me. You think some unwashed, has-been detective killer is somehow morally superior to me. I think everyone is morally superior to you, Kyle. You can't take the competition, can you? Because I'm successful and you're not, you resent me. Think about that. You're right, Kyle. You're too good for me. I'm moving out. Be ridiculous. I am so tired of being ridiculous. We're through. I won't be needing those anymore anyway. I'm off the case. Get out of here, cop. <coughs> I'd say your ribs are broken. No kidding. Leave him alone. All right. You better call the doctor. Go for it, you son of a bitch. Okay, 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 relax, relax, Joe. Relax. What are you doing, man? Would you just calm down? Joe, this has got nothing to do with you. Come on! All I wanted was this. This is old news, Joe. I've been straight for 10 years. Bullshit! Then listen to me! It was one thing for Farley to blackmail me, but now his fucking kid has taken over. Only the kid wants twice what the old man collected. He wanted to take over the business, and he couldn't wait, so he killed his old man. Give me the tape. Okay. I'm gonna put a hole in your head! It slipped, man. I swear to God, it slipped. I didn't kill him, Joe. It wasn't me.
What are you doing here? I'm on firing you. Oh, why? Sometimes I can be a bit of an asshole. Look, I didn't do it. You didn't, did you? I need your help. I need yours. Where do you want these? Anywhere. Deborah says she was in Chicago with her husband the night Farley was killed. Sure. I understand your feelings about Deborah, but I think she and her husband are involved in this. Couples talk. There's no telling how much. For what I know about Vincent, he didn't do it. Unless he had a personal reason. You're fishing. Yeah, I guess. What are you doing? I'm moving out. Oh, yeah? About time. I don't want to talk about it. Good, I don't want to talk about it either. I was married once in the Peace Corps. So Donald decided to play ambassador love to every woman in Costa Rica. Kind of a one-man goodwill tour. So I finally divorced him. Why are you telling me this? I guess I just want you to understand all this. I... I haven't moved out yet. I'm your attorney. So we can't afford this. Afford what? Getting involved. Don't play dumb. I just brought that box over to you. Any tape? Oh, you got a place to stay tonight? My sister has a spare bedroom. It's lucky. This is for Jennifer Hudson. My name's Tony Sklar. I have information you might be able to use. I would like to discuss with you the value of such information. I'm going to be at the Walpole State Prison Infirmary. Get here after visiting hours tonight. Ask for the warden. Uh, don't bring any other person or any recording device or the whole deal is off. I know that guy. He's a pathological liar. It's a lead, Joe. It's nowhere. I'm going to go check it out. Okay. I die. Yeah. Well, he's tried suicide twice this month. I think he's just trying to get away from the population. Of course, you can't be sure. He's a pretty unstable character. Well, you know his history, don't you? I'll give you 10 minutes. I'm safe. What is it you had to tell me? I can get your client off, but I want a deal. What deal? I just lost an appeal. Looks like I'm gonna be in here another 30 years. I got a wife and kid I want them taken care of. And I want some leniency for me. You must know I'm in no position to make deals. You got influence, you can do something. 
need to know what you've got. Never hear of Harry Norton. Your client sent him away on a conspiracy to commit murder rap. We checked him out. He was in Rio at the time of the murder. <laughs> of course he was. Listen to me. Norton had a beautiful chick at the time he went in the joint. Name of Celeste. Four years into Norton's sentence, Celeste up and Mary is our friend, Farley. <laughs> You'd never think a prick like Norton could get his heart broken. I mean, here's a guy who can have anybody off long distance, in jail or out. But he couldn't control his woman. And that made him crazy. And it was your client who sent him up and cut his balls off. Now, I'm in here because I've been accused of the double murder of federal witnesses. I'm not saying I did those. But I will say I have made hits a state doesn't know about. Norton hired me to kill Farley and his bride, Celeste. I set up an accident. I got Celeste, but Farley survived. Car accident on the Cape it was yours truly. I was supposed to let things cool and go back and finish Farley. I never got the chance. I came here instead. Who did Norton hire this time? Give me a good reason to tell you. Mr. Scolari. Please, tell me. You realize your credibility isn't the greatest? I know. So what can you do? I need proof. I have proof. I need to see it. That can be arranged. I'll see what I can do. Counselor, do us both a favor. Don't go sniffing around for your mystery man without checking with me first. You might hurt yourself. Listen, I have a witness who's willing to testify that he was hired to kill Farley and his wife. He'll name who hired him. This guy succeeded on Celeste. That auto accident was no accident. Reputable witness? Mr. Fabrication, did he sell you any swamp land down in Florida? He wants to make a deal. Sure he does. The guy's a known liar. He's offering proof, but he won't give it without some kind of a deal. I don't deal with scum. This guy is septic tank material. Help me buy time. Tell me you'll support negotiations if he delivers. You're reaching. He's offering exculpatory evidence. Don't obstruct that. The word of a known liar does not qualify as evidence. You can't suppress this, Nix. Help me make a deal. You had your chance. I'm inclined to grant counsel for the defense adequate time to investigate this witness's potential. We'll adjourn for one day, pending possible new evidence for the defense. But if that should fail, I'll want closing arguments in 48 hours. Hey, Sklar, telephone. That lawyer. Hudson. Hello, Tony. Hello? Save him. I want to move to the city hospital. Can't do that. If he stays here, whoever did it will know he succeeded. All right. This 
Jennifer Hudson. My name is Tony Sklar. I uh, have information you might be able to use. I would like to discuss with you the value of such information. I'm going to be at the Walpole State Prison Infirmary. I get here after our visiting hours tonight. Ask for the warden. Uh, don't bring any other person or any recording device. Or the whole deal is off. This is for Jennifer. My name's Tony Sklar. I, uh... Anybody told me I'd be putting words in a dead man's mouth. The value of such information. I'm gonna be at the Walpole State Prison Infirmary. I'm gonna be at the Walpole... Infirmary. Get you. I haven't been fair to you. you. Tonight, ask for the warden. Ask. 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 Or any recording device. The whole deal is off. The whole deal is off. I don't know what your game is, Tony, but you can't pin anything on me. Officer Strickler, this is Jennifer Hudson. You better watch out, lady, because you could get real hurt. Interesting. talking about mr norton this is jennifer hudson and i represent mr scalar we're suing you for assault with intent to kill let me talk to scalar again he has nothing further to say to you yeah i got plenty to say to him i had nothing to do with that hit on him and how did you know about the hit i read the herald like any good citizen i'm afraid he was not identified in the herald no don't give me that shit. i can put two and two together i know a setup when i see one and i'm not buying You've been positively identified, and now Mr. Scalar wants satisfaction. He's full of shit. We're both full of shit. <sighs> nice job. Let's see if he buys it. Joe, how's it going? Hey, Joe. Hi, guys. We're a prison from the DA. We don't want any. Protection. Nick's sword. Got to see, right? You owe me two bucks. Hey, uh, you really missed out on the Is Nick's in? It's Jennifer Hudson. James, we do not want any protection. In the garden lately? Because we want to do things our own way, and you're interfering, plain and simple. Whatever you want for a time. Yeah. He wants to talk to you. <clears throat> yes, he wants. No problem, sir. Yes, sir. He says we're to keep you in our sights, but uh, you can stick us where you want. How about Cleveland? It isn't working. You relax.
calling. Deborah, there's no answer. Cops, they're gonna blow this. It's not working anyway. Give it more time. You've been here for hours. Yeah, indeed. Wedding? No, I wasn't invited. What? 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 You're not going to Ned's wedding? No. Why not? Well, because I dated once and then once. You went out with Mandy? Yeah. When was this? About six months ago. Hey, who's that? Looks like Wilkinson. Nah, Wilkinson's on vacation. Well, where'd he go? Someplace with his mother. You know Wilkinson. Who is this guy? I don't know. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Started. What? Give me the keys to the restaurant. Stay upstairs. Thank you. 
Joe? Ma'am? Sorry, ma'am, I need to use your phone. There's a man hurt on the street outside. Joe! Oh, my God, call an ambulance. I'm going to... Where's Sklar? Sklar? He called from here. Yes, um... Step away from the window. Where is he? You're Harry Norton. Where is Sklar? But, but you couldn't have killed Farley. You were out of the country. I have a long reach and a score to settle with two old pals. I set up to hit on Farley and nailed Paris at the same time. Where's this over lady? Where is Sklar? He's not here. I'll, I'll take you to him. Just tell me. I have to show you. He's... He's not far. He's in the next building. All right, lady, let's go. Joe, can't you do anything right?